Good set. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Try that again. Good Sunday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onig with a quick check of your forecast as we head out of the first weekend of spring and into the first full week of spring. We've got, unfortunately, yes, the possibility of some more rainfall out there and the possibility of, again, some more thunderstorms. And that includes right on into tonight where we are seeing and monitoring a lot of storms back to our west. We don't have anything immediate. So if you're tuning in right at about 8 o'clock or so Sunday evening. We don't have a lot happening just yet, but later on, if you're watching at this uh, playback at maybe about, say, 10, 11, midnight, somewhere in there, you definitely want to keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for any updates because we will be seeing that potential of maybe some stronger storms making their way through the area. Now, we just got the, the latest update from the Storm Prediction Center. Things are calming down a bit, but not by much. We're looking again at the possibility, still the threat of severe weather across parts of the Mid-South tonight, and that's something we're going to have to pay attention to as we go into the overnight hours. We'll detail when, where, how much. We'll walk you through the forecast as we go into bright and early tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for more on that. We're going to kind of hop and skip around a little bit. We usually do a lot of cameras and some other stuff at this time, but the main threat at this time, the main story for tonight is stronger thunderstorms and maybe some severe weather out there. So again, stay tuned for more on that. Quick check of the forecast for those of you who can't stick around for the whole thing. Temperatures only dropping into the mid-50s by tomorrow morning, and those west to southwesterly winds will help to keep the temperatures up by just a little bit. Not by much, but again, not exactly the 30s either. Those will be back briefly later on this week. So again, stay tuned for more on that as we keep you updated on that throughout the course of the rest of the evening. Here's what it looks like for right now in the yellow boxes. Again, the large areas from southern Illinois through southeast Missouri. This is a severe thunderstorm watch. It is just north of the News Channel 3 viewing area. This one is in effect until 10 o'clock this evening. This other one was issued just past 5 o'clock this evening, and this one is in effect until midnight from right around the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex back to the Arkansas-Missouri state line. So we have two severe thunderstorm watch boxes here. So far, as of again 8 o'clock this evening, we do not have any indication that the Storm Prediction Center is going to be issuing any more watches for the area that could happen, but again, we do not see anything in the way of major problems for that for right now. Now, could that change? Yes, absolutely. One way or the other, whether we see an end of the severe weather more quickly or whether this gets dragged out into overnight, could be again looking at that potential. The orange boxes that you see here are severe thunderstorm warnings from just around Dallas all the way back up to just around St. Louis earlier this evening. So again, nothing indicating anything in the way of any tornadic weather going on. Isolated tornadoes possible. Some pretty good rotations detected earlier back around St. Louis in Missouri. This is the way it kind of shakes out for right now. And again, we've got some pretty good lines of storms developing from just northeast of Fayetteville, Arkansas, back to around Arnold and Herculaneum on I-55 south of St. Louis. A little bit more activity in St. Louis around the Westchester area, back toward Manchester and into around the area of Florissant, picking up some thunderstorms there, moving their way back toward the east. Some more thunderstorms down to around Fort Smith. These appear to have been lessening a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, in the last couple of hours. So hopefully that's leading to a trend to where we will not see anything else in the way of major amounts of problems out there for right now. Uh, welcome to everybody checking in across the area for uh, the evening hours tonight uh, into the Mid-South. Do appreciate the kind comments from everybody as well and the weather reports uh, for tonight. So thanks a lot for everybody for checking in uh, for tonight. Christine Rivers from Knoxville, Tennessee, my wife's uh, home stomping territory and the entire Alford clan back there in, uh, in and around Fountain City. So uh, thanks for joining us from back east for today and everybody else on there as well. Let's take Storm Tracker 3S radar and we'll do some zoom ins on this. Now, again, Memphis in the Mid South area down here, these thunderstorms back up around West Plains, Koshkanong, Poplar Bluff, into around the current river area. Most of these are going to be missing us heading across I 55, I 57 in the next couple of hours. So these don't appear to be too much of a problem. Likewise, the area back down around Fayetteville and Fort Smith, 
north of the Dardanelles and Russellville, not picking up a lot on I-40, but kind of sandwiched in between there with a couple of lines of thunderstorms going on there. Uh, the ones down into and around the area from Hartford and around Mena, Arkansas, some of these looks like they might hit the, for the uh, around the area of Little Rock in the next couple of hours. So far, that doesn't look like a main threat, but some of these thunderstorms, remember, as they drift and collapse, they could send out a wave of energy into the atmosphere, which could redevelop some of those thunderstorms. Now, directly here in the Mid-South area, nothing going on except for a few scattered showers, and we did have a couple of flashes of lightning down around Clarksdale earlier, but really we don't have much of anything going on uh, at this time. But again, in the next couple of hours, definitely want to keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and again, we'll keep you updated on what's going on at this point. So again, much of what we're looking at for right now appears to be that light area of showers, and again, that's just past about 8 o'clock, so right now it's decently quiet. Later on, in the next couple of hours, uh, some of these thunderstorms could be getting close enough to us if they continue their trend of diminishing, which they look like they are. If you get a lot more lightning, kind of like when your popcorn really starts going crazy on the, uh, in the microwave or if you're cooking at the air popper, again, that's a good sign that the thunderstorms with extra lightning are getting stronger and building. If the, the lightning starts to fade, that's usually a good sign, usually, not always, but usually a good sign that the storms are losing their intensity. So we're not seeing them start to collapse. They are, again, going to be around for the next couple of hours, but if they start to kind of lose more of that punch, that should help out for here in the Mid-South area for our threat for severe weather into later on tonight. We'll walk you through the timing on this coming up in just a little bit. Still pretty mild out there. Weathernet 3 back in the mid to upper 60s, and winds have calmed down a little bit, but Memphis International was picking up some 15-mile-per-hour-plus wind gusts out there for the afternoon and evening hours, and we'll continue to see that throughout the course of the rest of the evening. Through about News Channel 3 at 10, that line of storms continues to head a little bit closer to us and then starts to drift through the area as we work our way through about very early tomorrow morning from about 2 to about 4 o'clock west of the Mississippi River area and the Memphis metro area. That's where we see that line of storms kind of wandering its way on through. We're not getting a big whoosh of energy to push these storms through, so they are not going to be racing through the area which could increase our possibility for flash flooding. That's something to keep an eye on there. Through tomorrow morning around News Channel 3 daybreak, again, the thunderstorms continue to make their way through and heading on down to the south end of the east. But we could still see some thunderstorms around the area by tomorrow morning around daybreak, most of it to the southeast of the metro area, but Corinth back toward Oxford, Batesville, Clarksdale in that area. You may see some thunderstorms left over, and that could mean some wet roadways and some slow commute times getting to school tomorrow for north parts of Mississippi and some parts of southwest Tennessee. So that, again, could be a bit of a problem, but Todd Demers will have more on your forecast starting bright and early at 4.30, and, of course, Corey Ventura will have more on Time Saver Traffic in the morning to keep you updated on there for right now. Uh, Steve Montgomery, what I'm saying is your dog will wake you up around 2 a.m., um, I don't know. My dogs kind of sleep through everything, so it's possible. I don't know your dogs well enough, but uh, it's a possibility. So thanks a lot for uh, asking about that, but can't really say one way or the other on that. Through the rest of tomorrow morning, the showers and what's left of everything starts to leave the area, taking the chances of rain with it as some drier air gets escorted in from the northwest. But it's going to be probably in the early afternoon hours before we get rid of all of the rainfall chances and we finally start to clear out, but not until about Tuesday, and that's where we get rid of some of the cloud cover out there briefly before, yes, our next chance of rainfall heads our way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the good news at this time, the enhanced possibility of severe weather from Little Rock down to Dallas, this was coupled with another enhanced risk back to the north. This forecast is only about 15 minutes old, and as of right now, that threat has been curtailed by just a little bit. We still have a slight risk category for areas into and around the Mid-South area into eastern Arkansas as that threat moves across the state and heads our way. And the green-shaded areas, that's the lowest possibility of severe weather for West Tennessee and northwest parts of Mississippi. 
that's where we're again seeing that potential of lesser possibilities of severe weather out there. But this is something, again, we need to pay attention to out there. And if you are traveling late tonight, if you're heading out the door pretty soon, you're going to be uh, making an overnight road trip. A lot of you have very early morning hours to keep or you have a long way to go before you get to your jobs in the morning. If you're heading toward Little Rock, Texarkana, southern Arkansas, northeast Texas, this could be an area you're going to be watching the skies and keeping an ear to local media for the possibility of more stronger storms taking place here. Now, again, this forecast will change as we get into the evening hours. We're hoping to see an even lesser chance of severe weather as conditions kind of stabilize for just a little bit. That's where we see, again, the potential for, again, the highest potential of severe weather in the yellow-shaded area. Main threats will be damaging winds and large hail. Cannot rule out the possibility of an isolated tornado. It's what happens at this time of the year, so we have to be ready for that, as we have seen, again, the possibility and some rotation of that going on back into around St. Louis tonight. So that is something that we really need to watch. Now, the good news is, as we go through tonight into tomorrow, the threat moves away from us. Parts of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and parts of the Carolinas will pick up a marginal threat into tomorrow, so that'll be all over with for there. Overnight, again, showers and thunderstorms could linger into daybreak tomorrow morning, so keep it tuned for updates on that with Todd Demers tomorrow. Just showers around the area of midday, again, through about the end of rush hour, News Channel 3 live at 9. There could be some showers out there with cloudy skies, and cloudy skies will stick around throughout the rest of the day, but the bulk of anything involving thunderstorms will be after midnight and just into around the very early hours of Monday. Cooler on Tuesday as that dry air makes its way on through, which means by about Wednesday morning could be pretty chilly at the bus stop, and this may be one of the last times this season that we see temperatures in the 30s. From here on out, we start to see some pretty mild conditions, close to normal by the week's end. Unfortunately, after a decent dry spell between Monday and Thursday evening, showers and thunderstorms come back into the picture as we get into next weekend, and some of that could involve thunderstorms, now, does this mean that we're looking at the possibility of even more severe weather? At this time of the year, we can't rule anything out, but because this is still several days away, it's too early to tell at this point. So the best thing you can do is to keep attuned to the weather experts, and we'll keep you updated on what's going to be going on uh, into and around the area for tonight. Chances of rain continue into the second full week of springtime. Uh, hopefully, again, not a problem for anything the way a river's creeks and streams out there, but the Mississippi River on its way downwards for right now, and that water level in the Mississippi will take the better part of the rest of the month to drop below flood stage. So it's going to be the first weekend of April before we start to see less than about maybe 28 feet on the Mississippi River, and it's going to take that much of a longer time for, again, uh, Big River Crossing to open back up, so please keep that in mind if you're planning a stroll toward downtown Memphis. Check out my video environmental blog. Just posted it a little while ago. It's all about Earth Hour, not Earth Day, but Earth Hour, which is coming up this next Saturday. It'll be our fifth year at News Channel 3 in participating in helping you to save money by conserving energy. So if you'd like to know more about that, wrhe.com slash weather. Click on the environment button or just go to wrhe.com slash weather slash environment and you'll find your way there quite nicely. All right, one more check for those of you who are just tuning in and keeping an eye on things for tonight. Again, we have, well, hang on one second, cranky computers happen sometime. We are waiting to see if the Storm Prediction Center is going to be doing uh, anything new at this time and what we're looking for is the potential of maybe a new watch being issued uh, into and around the area here in the Mid-South area. Now so far in the uh, Storm Prediction Center uh, parlance they have these things called mesoscale discussions which do a good job of letting people know what's coming our way if there's a watch about to be issued, the percentage chance of that and as of, what, 8.18 this evening, we don't have any indication that a new watch is going to be issued. But with those storms making their way through parts of Missouri and Arkansas, we could see another watch issued here, I would guess, before we hit News Channel 3 at 10. 
Uh, it's possible. Right now, it doesn't seem likely. But again, keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised on that. Right now, again, Southern Missouri and Western Arkansas picking up the heaviest activity. Here in the Mid-South, we really have not much of anything going on immediately. But later on tonight, that could be a much different story. So we'll wait to see what happens over the course of the next couple of hours. So once again, keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more. And we'll keep our eyes on these storms out west as they continue to kind of hold together, but they still be they still seem to be doing a good job of either holding or dropping in intensity by just a little bit, which is good news because again the Storm Prediction Center has removed the enhanced threat. Used to be two of these orange polygons, one down around the Arklatex, one up in Missouri. That one has been erased, but for the Mid-South area, we still see that threat of severe weather for tonight, and that includes basically all of the News Channel 3 viewing area. And this will be a new forecast issued probably uh, 8 o'clock for right now, give or take. It'll probably be around midnight to 1 a.m. before the next forecast comes out. We'll keep you updated again to give you an idea as to what may be coming our direction. That'll do it for this edition of News Channel 3's uh, Weather Overtime video blog to keep you updated on what's going on. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 on air, and if anything does turn severe, new watches or anything like that, the crawl will be running at the bottom of the screen. And, of course, if there's anything tornadic going on, we'll let you know a little bit more about that coming up as we go into the overnight hours. The main thing at this point in time is get your weather radio ready to go so you have another way of getting your weather alerts. Don't depend on tornado sirens to wake you up. Our houses, our buildings these days are much more better insulated, so it's much more difficult to be able to hear outdoor sirens. So you need an app on your cell phone, like the News Channel 3 app that we have. You need a weather radio. You need, again, to watch News Channel 3 for the crawl and the ticker information at the bottom of your screen. And, of course, we'll have updates on the forecast as well coming up. We'll be a little bit late tonight, thanks in part to the NCAA tournament running behind by just about 40 minutes. So join us at about 1040 for the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10. And, of course, Todd Demers will have more on your forecast coming up bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Once again, one quick wrap-up. So far at about 20 past 8, we do not have any watches issued, but we are keeping an eye on several watch boxes back to the west of us and north of us to where we could see some more severe weather. Good news at this time, we have not seen any indication that the Storm Prediction Center, which issues these, is going to put out another one for the Mid-South. That could be forthcoming in the next few hours or not. That's why you need to pay attention to what goes on out there. So definitely want to stay tuned for more on that. I'll have updates on your forecast tonight at 10 and join Todd tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Thanks for joining us for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, weather overtime, and stay tuned for a lot more as these storms get closer to the Mid-South later tonight.